Yo, what's going on? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. I had to think about that for a second. But it is Tuesday. Weird thing happened to me at the bus stop today with my younger daughter. We got there super early, but it felt like the regular time. And normally there's other signs uh, of like the start of the day. Like there's one kid that lives really close to the bus stop. They got their garage door. They usually open it for a couple of minutes before they're about to come out. And then there's, I see some of the other kids. And then when I get to the bus stop, there's usually other kids at the one bus stop ahead that we could see in the distance. None of that happened today. And so me and my daughter for a minute thought maybe it wasn't Tuesday today. And maybe it was some sort of school holiday or the weekend. We had to think about it for a second. But then everyone else showed up. And so then it was fine. But it is, in fact, Tuesday today. And um, we got a really fun show. Got something. I think this is from Koros. It's from Koros. So we'll check out what this is. Um, and I'll explain why there isn't going to be Trivia Tuesday today. But first, let's say hi to everyone listening on the audio-only version on the podcast. Hopefully, you're having a good run. The weather here in Crystal Lake is absolutely gorgeous. Terrifying for February, if you think about it. Um, but we may have a record setting high today. I ran in shorts and a t-shirt and it was too much. I could have gone with a singlet today. Could have probably even gone shirtless. One of those kinds of days. It was hot. I'm, this is a shirt that I wore for my run. It's soaking wet. So, uh, weird, weird, but you know, I guess you take the good days when you can. And hopefully this, this doesn't mean that summer is going to be unbearable, but it was beautiful weather. Hopefully you have beautiful weather today too. And for everyone else watching this later, but not live. This is the number one podcast to listening to in case you're waiting for a tow truck to come and pick up your car. So today what happened was, um, well, I'll get to that story in a second, but it's re related to basically my car broke down. But, uh, but there's a funny part to the story too. Um, but uh, let's see who else is here in the chat before I start talking about me. Nataku says, hey, Mike, it was great meeting you this Sunday at the Kafuzi Run Club in Bussy Woods. I usually run alone, so having a small group was really nice. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. It meant a lot. Well, it was great to meet you, and thanks for coming out. Um, it was a good size group. That's kind of my favorite size group, um, where you can take time to like try and remember everyone's name, get a chance to speak with everyone, and it makes it it makes it much more pleasant. So I was glad that you were there. And thanks for coming. Uh, and Morgan the Running Guy says, cool stuff that some of you met up and all ran together this past weekend. When is there going to be one in SoCal? LOL. Uh, I was looking again at the calendar today to see if I could maybe swing an LA marathon trip, but I don't think that I can. I got some other travel coming up too. Um, and I'm trying not to travel too much between now and London, just to because it's very disruptive to training. You know, so I'm trying not to travel, but I do, I do love SoCal, especially in the winter. Um, I used to go every year to San Diego for my wife's conference. That was always fun. But she doesn't have that conference anymore. Or I think she still does, but it's not in San Diego anymore. It was always the weekend after Comic-Con. And that was a great time of year to go to San Diego. Um, Daniel Burton says, I ran a mile today, no back pain. Felt great to run. Hopefully I'll be ready for Carlsbad 5000. All right, fingers crossed. Andrew Scott says, hi, 50s in Indy for this morning's run. It's really nice to wear shorts and a t-shirt instead of gloves and layers. It is nice. I'm not complaining. I guess I'm not complaining. I'm just worried what it means. But um, it is really, really nice for sure. Sean Devlin had 20 by 400 on the track this morning. That is a lot of 400s. And he said he ran in the Rocket X2s for the first time, and they were a joy. Test them on a long run soon. I don't know what I said, but it got my um, cereal worked up and bothered but whoo 20 times 400 is a lot man um let's see who else we got here cosmo pineapple michael says back from vacation in san francisco and caught up on live streams p.s i did i, I did ask boston billy about the mail okay 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 so cosmo pineapple michael is the one who asked boston billy about the mail and he has confirmed he used to keep a jar of mayonnaise at the bedside Oh, <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, Martha had some challenging fartlek ladders today, particularly on tired legs from Sunday's 18er. Uh, my run today was tiring. I, my 18 mile run was yesterday. Um, so it was 
one day later than yours. But today's run, as what nice as the weather was, the run kind of felt not great. Nothing's hurting. It's just my body's tired, I think, a little bit, you know. Matt Beyer had seven, seven and a half steezy miles, low 50s here in Ohio in the Columbus area. Nice. Uh, and JC says, hey, folks, uh, finally go back to the track tonight, and he will not be doing 20 by 400. <laughs> oh, man, that's so many. All right. So um, let, me, let me tell you the story about the car. So yesterday I went to my daughter's away game basketball, and um, I, don't, I, th I think on the bus ride home from the basketball games, I think the coach talks to the team a lot about the game and they do a little bit of a debrief. I also think it's fun social time for the kids. So even though I drive to the basketball games, my daughter takes the bus home from the basketball game. Um, and then I have to go pick her up at school. And so uh, I drove from the basketball game to pick her up at school. I wait for about 15, I get, I get there maybe 10 minutes before the, the bus does. Um, and so, but I just wait because before I've gone home first and then I kind of forget and then I'm late. So I just been waiting at the school parking lot. So I'm in the par par school parking lot, pick up my daughter, uh, after the bus drops the kids off after the basketball game, I go to start the car and, uh, it won't start. It's making a weird kind of screeching noise. It, it didn't sound like a dead battery or issue, but, um, I don't know. It was a weird, it was a weird thing. And, uh, I eventually had, had to ask my wife to come pick us up. Um, so she did, and we left the car in the parking lot overnight. I do some YouTube searching uh, for a couple of possible solutions uh, overnight, and we go to AutoZone a couple times. Thought maybe it was some fuses or something. It's none of those things, so I ended up having to call my mechanic and uh, have the car towed. And, uh, you know, it's concerning. The car has, it's a car, the car's a 2015 Dodge Journey. Um, so, so it's nine, it's nine years old, almost 10 years old. And then uh, it's got 192 or 193,000 miles on it, something like that. And this is an older car. Every time something happens on it, it's always like, oh, is this the, is this, the, is this how it dies? Uh, kind of thing. But um, we get it tow. I call up the mechanic and they're like, yeah, yeah. Like we don't tow, but call up these guys, we use them. And so I call them up and uh, they came out right away. So like, they were like, are you at the car now? I'm like, no. And like, can you be at the car in 15 minutes? Cause we'll be there in 15 minutes. So I'm like, oh, okay. So we go back over to the school, they pick up the car and uh, I'm feeling bad about it. Cause I'm, I'm attached to that car it has some sentimental value to me. Um, but what made me feel better is that when the car, and they brought a flatbed truck. Um, but when the truck came up, this is the, like, they told me call like, MDL or something towing or something like that, right? So I call them up. But then when when the truck shows up, here's the flatbed truck. Here's here's the flatbed truck. Here's on my phone. Let me zoom in and tell you. I feel like I I'm feeling I feel like this is a good sign. I feel like maybe the car is not dead yet. Because look at the look at the name of the car of the truck that it was. I don't know if you could see that. The name of the towing company is Marathon Towing. See that? Do you see it on the side of the truck right there? I, I feel like that's a good sign. I feel like that's a good sign. Hopefully that means, uh, you know, it just needs a, a part that is relatively easy to reach and replace. That's what, that's what I hope. Anyway, um, so yeah. Uh, Colin Bloodworth is here. What's going on, Colin? And he says, what's up, everyone? Hope everyone has a great run today. I don't know if you guys know this, but Colin... Colin and I know go way back uh, on YouTube. We used to be in a little. Uh, what do they call them? There were the three of us. We we um. Not enclave. What is it? A uh, a cohort. We were like a cohort, a YouTube cohort, a long time ago. It was like me, Colin, Seth James Moore, and then there was Fabio Pavelli. B back when, like, all of us had like under a thousand subscribers. That was a long time ago. It's good to see you, Colin. Colin's been running lately. It's good to see, it's good to see too. Um, yeah. Mark Peterson says, we bought a new car on Saturday. I've never had a new car before. 
it was looking at the odometer with two miles on it and, dri and driving off the lot. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? I felt that I felt weird when I had a rental car with four miles on it. I thought that was bizarre. Um, Jen runs triangle says 2015 car is old. I don't think so, but I mean, kind of is. Most people don't. I don't think most people keep their cars around that long. Our other car is a 2017. We bought it used. I've never owned a new car before. Um, I've only bought used cars before. And I don't know, 2015, I don't, it doesn't feel old to me, <laughs> you know? But 2015 is also like seven phones ago, you know? Um, 2015 is also, it's 192,000 miles on a car. Most of them are not mine, but I think I've put 40,000 miles on the car. But, you know. <sighs> yeah, Shannon says, uh, too bad the, the uncle is in dire. I know, I know. I, well, you know what I did? I did take a video of it in case I thought I might have um, Uncle David take a look at it. I was like, take a, I'm like, can you diagnose what the problem is by the, based on this sound? <laughs> um, but I was like, you know what? I have a mechanic that I trust that's in town. And so I'll just have them take care of it. Lala P says, it's probably the timing belt, says every dad ever. I'm kind of work. aren't timing belts harder to replace, you know? So I'm hoping it's not that. Mm. <laughs> Jared Crano says, <laughs> Marathon Towing, second best local towing company behind Ultra Towing. <laughs> Terry Herlong says, Marathon Towing, they're in it for the long haul. <laughs> uh, Steven C1984 says, they'll only tow at 26.2 miles. I'm in luck. The mechanic's only like four miles away. So it's not, it's not bad. Um, yeah, Frank says, all we could see is the big honking USS, US flag. Yeah, I was a little bit concerned because the, the truck shows up and it's got the long spiky things sticking out of the side of the hubcaps, you know? And it's got flags painted all over it. And then I could see in the back of the cab, it's got some writing in there. And I'm like, oh boy, what sort of uh, don't tread on me kind of uh, America worship kind of prayer is going to be on the back there. But it was a it was a nice uh, in, rem in remembrance kind of thing of uh, the people that started the business. So it wasn't super crazy. And I felt better about it because it says marathon towing. So I was like, I was like, that's okay. I feel good about it. Um, let's see what else we got here about Marathon Tony. Um, Daniel Burton says, I have a 2004 Saturn View. Oh, my sister in law had one of those a long time ago. I used to have a Saturn, that was one of my first cars that I ever had. My parents gave it to me. Oh, well, it was my parents' car, and then they gave it to me, you know. Um, yeah, Andre247 says, you seem like a BMW guy. No, that's not, I mean, I think they're beautiful cars, um, but not not really my style. Um, I'd love to have a Cadillac. There, there's a good story my dad tells me about one time when I was like maybe like four or five years old. Um, my dad was getting picked up by someone who had a Cadillac and I was sitting in the back seat and it was just me. And this was back before you put kids in, maybe you put them in a baby seat, but not in a car seat. And I was sitting in the back of this Cadillac just by myself. And I was just like touching all the upholstery and saying how nice it was and telling my dad that he needs to get one of these. So I, I don't know, I've, I've always had a soft spot for Cadillacs, I guess. Mm -hmm. See, 1984 says, if you use marathon towing six times, you get a special medal. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Super Engine says, 5K towing is so sick of people asking if they'll ever be marathon towing. <laughs> uh, Daniel Burton says, I have never bought an, a used car. Oh, that's amazing. Mm. Sleep Singer says, I have a 2015 CRV that I just had to replace the transmission on. I bought it new and now only 125,000 miles on it, but no car payment. So I'm good with it. I mean, yeah, that that's what's really nice is that like there's no car payment on it. We have to rebuild our transmission too uh, about two years ago on that car. Um, and it's 
starting to act funny again. So I'm like, I don't know how much longer this car really has left to go. But um, even thinking about like the operating cost of that car over the last two years versus had I bought a used car and had a payment, it's a lot cheaper. Plus I'm attached to the car. I like it. So I don't want to say goodbye to it. Um, Mark says, what's the ratio of miles flown to miles driven in the last five years? In the last five years? I don't know. I'm, I mean, I feel like going to Japan is a lot of miles. Going to Germany is a lot of miles. Spain. Um, and I used to fly a lot for uh, my other work, too, if we go back five years. Um, and then back then, I was run commuting or taking uh, the train or the bus to work. I guess that still counts as driven, but I don't think it really counts. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably three to one, two to one, just to guess a little bit. Stevie <laughs> says, I wonder if there's going to be a believe in the run towing. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, and JC says, I've never bought a used car. I'm too afraid of it, of buying a money pit. Oh, that's fair enough. Uh, Steve Zabrowski says, the car in shoes has around 300 miles on the soles. <laughs> Time to start doing research for a new pair. I know. I know we got to start looking for a new one. Uh, I was hoping it would last us a couple more years for there to be more plug-in hybrids on the used car market. Right now, when you look at like used cars, it's just a flood of Tesla Model 3s, and I don't want one of those. So, uh, yeah. So, well, we'll see. Uh, I would love to... I don't really want to buy a new car, um, but I think used car prices are still high. So, I don't know. I don't know. Matt Byer says, I have a, man, you guys have old cars like I do. This is nice. Matt Byer says, 2013 CRV with about 200,000 miles and mineral repairs since we've owned it the last nine years. See, so, you know, that, that's good value. That's good value. See, for me, for running shoes, I don't care too much about longevity, but cars, I feel like, should last a little bit longer. Matt Legrand says, Yoko, what's going on? Good to see you, Matt. Thanks for stopping by. Shannon wants to know if Saturn still makes cars. No, they they went away uh, during, what was it, in 2008 when uh, the government bailouts and all that stuff. We lost Pontiac. We lost Oldsmobile. We lost Saturn. Saab went away. What other brands disappeared at that time when like there was the big bailout and we had to like drop all those brands? Mark Peterson says, my first and second cars were very used Saturns from my parents. Saturn made good cars. I liked the Saturns. I probably would have kept buying Saturns if they still existed. Stevie Sam 6 says, I drive a Dodge Stratus. That is an older car, too. SRN KX says, get an electric. I'd love to, but it's, uh, my wife has range anxiety, you know, because since we do go to, like, Iowa and stuff. Um, but I was like, well, yeah, I just drive it around here. Most of my trips around here, although I do drive a lot more now since my daughter changed rock climbing gyms and since we're following her around for all these basketball games and stuff. But, um, you know, all those, even those longer trips, it's less than 50 miles round trip, maybe 50 miles round trip. So I feel like that's a plug-in hybrid range where you could just switch on just electric. Um, but it, my wife would be more comfortable with but i'm like uh, then it's then then it's kind of you still have a whole gasoline engine and a whole electric engine and there's just two engines then i'd want to just i just want to do one engine but um uh, yeah I'd, I'd love the idea john john levitt's doing it he's got solar panels on his roof and he's got it wired to charge his car so this colorado sun powers his vehicle that's kind of where i want to go i would love that
Go running with office says co drives a Dodge and I bet wifey drives the 2025 Escalade. I would I, I thought that would be a nice car. You know, at one point my dad did what was funny a long time ago. Uh, I think both I was married. My sister was also married at the time. I think, and my parents were getting a new car. I don't know why, but all of us were there and when they were going car shopping. I think they were looking for a lease. And we're at the Chevy dealership and my sister and I just sitting in it because we're bored and we're just sitting in the Yukon. And I swear my dad was like, whoever can give us a grandchild first, I'll buy you this car. <laughs> my, my dad just wanted grandbabies so bad. Um, but yeah, I think that, do they, do they make an electric Escalade? I think they make a plug-in hybrid, right? I don't know. I don't know if I could convince my wife to go from a 2015 Dodge. Dodge Journey to a 2025 plug-in hybrid Cadillac. That that'd be kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I think uh, my kids would love a Jeep. That's what they want. They they want me to get a Jeep, and um, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea. I just need it to just drive around town. That's what's annoying. The, one of the things that drives me the most crazy about the suburbs is just like everything is a drive. Um. And so I'd like it for it to have as little impact as possible, you know. Terry Furlong says the best car I ever owned was a Fiat Panda. I walked away unhurt when I totaled it, so it was always get my vote. Do they do they sell Fiats in the U.S. anymore? I don't think that they do. One of my buddies in high school had one. Was it a Fiat? I don't know if it was a Fiat. It was a tiny little blue car made out of just sheet metal. Um, that car was amazing. A little two-door car. We used to jump right into it. Had a big window, so you just jump in it without opening the doors. That was fun. Jared Crano says, I have a Tesla Model 3. It's the best car I've ever had. Would recommend. Oh, okay. I, I've heard mixed things about them. So I was almost, I'm always just like, I don't know. Mm. Matt Crackson says, get a Toyota RAV4 hybrid. Best of all, work. Um, sounds good. Sounds good. Mm. Post call with Paul says, I got a 2007 Prius that just hit 315,000 miles. Wow. How did you? I mean, I guess that's a long, that's 17 years old. That's an old car. Wow, that's amazing. JC's still driving a 2005 Xterra running car, sort of, and still under 70,000 miles? Really? I always heard that those didn't last very long. I always always steered away from those. That's amazing. Hmm. Tracy Smith says, we inherited my mom's 2003 Camry with less than 40,000 miles. I think we're going to be driving it till we die. Those things do last a very long time. That's a 21-year-old 21, 21 car. Isn't that wild? Uh. Mm. All right. All Heart RC says, I know it's not Monday, but can you shout out for my kids going for sub three for the first time in Ventura? All right, guys. Uh, when is Ventura? You gotta let me know when Ventura is. Um, good luck to you guys going for sub three. It's a big challenge, but I think you guys can do it. I've been seeing you guys workouts. You guys have been putting in the work, so I think you guys can do it. Vanessa Martinez says, instead of buying a new car, just become an ultra marathon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, it's just hard because like our, the school is on a busy road and so like kids are not allowed to, to walk or take a bike to school, you know, uh, that, that's just uh, how the suburbs are. Suburbs be that way, you know, mm -hmm. mm, my mother-in-law has a Ford Escape hybrid. She really likes it. But I want like a plug-in. I want one that I can plug in and like flip it to just electric. Because I feel like most of my driving, I can do just electric. You know? Even though like plug-in hybrids, the 
all electric range is usually like like 50 miles. It's pretty weird, but I could do that for most of my driving, I think. <laughs> Vanessa Martinez, is the grandbaby new car deal still valid? <laughs> I might be looking for a new car soon. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I don't think he never he never bought any of us a new car. <laughs> I think he just really wanted to have a grandchild. But he's not, now he has now he has four grandkids. So mm. yeah, a lot of people are saying don't get a Jeep because of the poor quality. I mean, I wouldn't be getting it for its reliability record. I'd be getting it uh, for my kids to have a fun car to get picked up in. Really, you know, I'm not taking it off road. You know, why would I do that? Uh, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Mark Peterson says the suburban mindset: nothing is walkable, but everything is just a 20 minute drive. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, all right. Sleep Singer says, "Are we opening a box today?" That was a lot of car talk today. Um, Jen Piazza says, "All this car talk makes me happy that I live in New York City. And I don't own a car. I miss walkable neighborhoods a lot. A lot. All right. But we are opening a box." All right, let's get to it. From Cora. Oh, yeah, it's from Cora. So I do have the Coros down here that I think we're going to need for this one. Now, got a couple of things in here. Let's take a look. The first thing is they've sent me another heart rate monitor. And I'm saying another because I'm pretty sure i've reviewed this already but i went through my notes and my videos and i don't have a review for this so i must have looked at it and been like mm. but this looks familiar to me i don't but i don't also don't remember it but they sent a heart rate monitor and they sent me some uh, heart rate monitor bands look at these extra fun colors so we'll try the fun colors on this and this. Let's open this up, take a look at it. And then, you know, let me see, I'll take off my Apple Watch. My other watch is already upstairs, but I've got the Coros Pace 3. This is the track edition. Put that on. And then let's get this thing open. And then uh, see what it looks like with the new band on. Should we do that? How do I open this? I feel like it opens this part, top part slides off. This is a difficult unboxing. See, I've got, what? There's no tape in here. You know, it'd be wild as if they just sent me back the original heart rate monitor that I had sent returned to them. Okay, there we go. Got it out of there. And here it is. Here's the heart rate monitor. It is about the size of a whoop. So you've got this monitor on the back here. And it does look pretty similar. Let's take a look at what does the monitor on the back of the watch look like? Is it that different? And they are side by side. Looks a little bit different, but here we go. Uh, let's take a look at the charging cable in here. Yeah, I think I have reviewed this before because you know what I just, uh, this is the charging cable. And I just found one of these in my house the other day. I must have not returned the charging cable when I returned the other one. But we'll take another look at it. Because um, I think that's important. It's important to do. Especially if I don't remember it. I'll try it again. So how do we get this band off? Oh, so here we go. There's a little Velcro. And I'm guessing we could just take it off. There we go. Oh, you know what I didn't realize? The top of this is transparent. 
So there's that. All right. And you know what bothers me already? I guess maybe if I do it with the regular Coros Paste 3 that I have, that's over there. That has a white band. It won't be as weird. But they made the Paste 3, right, track edition. And I'm going to open up this red band. Uh-oh. There was an easy open pull tab, and I messed it up. Okay, here we go. But the color doesn't match. And I don't think that, I looked at some of the different colors. This is like a peach and a red. I'm not sure I like that. But you know what, let's get this on. See how this works all together. See if I like it more with a different color. Do you guys use any of these? Vanessa Martinez says, this is how we keep my dad occupied. Let him unbox stuff and put it together. <laughs> He's busy for hours and won't come up for air until dinner time. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get this on. I don't know how to do it. I think I gotta undo this. There we go. And then put this on. See, dude, I could see, I could see. How, you know how you know how you would keep me busy for hours? Just give me a puzzle. Um, I will, I, I become obsessed with puzzles. On the hot run hot trip that I went on um, with Solomon last year, um, when we would get to the huts and rest for the night, some of the huts had puzzles in them and everyone was like, Hey Mike, why don't you join us? We're doing a puzzle. And I'm like, I can't. And they're like, what do you mean you can't? I'm like, if I do that, I won't get any sleep. I won't eat. I will just do the puzzle and I need to get some rest because I'm exhausted. And they thought I was kidding, but that's true. All right, here we go. So here we go. You could put it on the bicep, and that's where I've been putting my external heart rate monitors lately, but you can also do it on the forearm. So you got that as an option, or you can loosen it even further and get it up higher on the arm. There we go. It feels pretty comfy. I like it up there. There we go. We'll try them out together. We'll do some testing how I like the um New color options. I think I might like the yellow a little bit more. As long as we're going colors that don't match the watch. I wish they made a one, matching one for the watch. But we'll try it. Um, TJ Bright says, I thought I remember watching you review this band as well. Is there not a video? I don't know. They asked me if I wanted another one. I was like, let's let's try. Um, Matt Legrand says, I generally like Corals' stuff. Track edition for the win. And those optical heart rate sensors tend to work great, but moving an optical heart rate sensor away from the wrist is smart. Yeah, and so someone else was asking like, what's the point of this, aren't they on the back? Yes, so like they're on the back and I showed you guys how it's, I don't know if it's the exact same sensor, but a very similar looking sensor on both the watch and uh, the wrist, uh, both the watch and the external heart rate one um, on the armband. But the reason why is that, um, and it's especially for bands that are not Velcro and I don't know if you guys noticed, but all my watches that I use have, I switch out to Velcro wristbands. Um, they just don't stay in the right spot tight enough. And these are optical sensors that rely on um, changes in light that happen in your wrist. It measures that. And um, that's how it can tell because of the blood that's flowing through there, it, the light changes every time blood pulses through. And uh, if that t if that contact point is not tight enough and there's light that's getting through there because maybe it's l loose and it's jiggling, that will interfere and cause erroneous um, heart rate readings. Um, and a lot of times people will end up having heart rates that get pegged near like 180 during their run. 
And usually that's because of like your arm is moving around a lot and it just is confusing the optical sensor. When you move it away from down on the, and because there's, there's a lot of bones in the wrist and when your arm moves, it changes the thickness of your wrist quite a bit. Uh, and some people's wrists and skin tones just doesn't work to have use a regular wristband. So if you move it up higher on the arm, um, then it ten where there's more meat, basically, um, you can get a little bit more snug in there and the chance for light leak is less. And then you can get a better quality reading. So that's the whole reason behind that. Mm, TJ Brady says, ah, they don't match. Come on, Koros. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I can go get the other one. Hold on. Good thing I'm wearing pants. Oh. So here's the other Koros Pace 3 that I have. Um, just as though it's like the regular edition. So I feel like this, like this peachy coral color with this is kind of fun. I like that. I think that the yellow, or is this, I think it's yellow, so it's probably some sort of mint green. Um, I think also it goes well together. I'm actually kind of liking this and this better. The white band and this. That kind of works. So I'll probably, maybe I'll test those two together. But, um, and the main reason I was like, sure, go ahead, send it, is because I wanted to have a, like, kind of another reason to retest the algorithm. I got a message from someone at Coro saying that, like, they've been tinkering with the pace algorithm in terms of how quickly it updates. My big complaint with the Coro Space 3 was that it seems to take, like, over 20 seconds between when I go from running hard to, like, recovery for that to get picked up. And then the other way around, if I'm going from recovery pace to interval work pace, it's going to take about 20 seconds for that change to register. Um, and so they've tweaked it. They've narrowed, they've made it more like garments, which is closer to like 12 seconds of a difference. Um, at least in my very, very anecdotal t testing. So I got to make sure I have the latest, latest firmware on this update on it um and then i'll test that again with heart rate data so and then the nice thing is if i have new heart rate data that's not necessarily from the wrist if it's from an armband that can also uh, heart rate is a little bit of a laggy indicator of when things are changing too so that's maybe not the best way to indicate exactly when i started moving again but you know Halden J says, any advantage of these watches if I already have an Apple Watch? Uh, I think that there are a lot that I like about it. My app, and they're becoming less apparent now. They'll be less apparent now uh, that the temperatures are rising. But I have an Apple Watch SE that I bought two Chicago marathons ago. And about a month ago when it was cold out here, um, after about 30 minutes, uh, if I changed a podcast or changed what the watch was doing and I was streaming music. If I went from streaming music to a podcast or from change, we're listening to a podcast, maybe a podcast ended and then had to search for a new one or the next one, it would just die. The battery it would go from hundred percent to 10% and it shut itself off. Um, and so that's not great. Um, also the battery life generally is not as great on the Apple watch for me. I have to charge it every night. Um, Whereas watches like the Koros has a crazy, crazy long battery life. It can last weeks, uh, even with a lot of running per week, uh, a lot of GPS tracking. And so that those would be some, some reasons. Um, but Apple Watch uh, can be very accurate uh, and very use, usable. But I also just don't like any watch that has one button and requires me to interface with the touchscreen while I'm running. So um, maybe it's just got sweaty fingers. Uh, Chase Branding says, I've been using the Carlos Heart Rate Monitor with Pace 3 for about two months. I really like it. Simple connection and great battery life. Just wish the Heart Rate Monitor had a way of notifying that the battery is low. Yeah, I don't, I don't love, I don't love the way that most heart rate monitors don't do a good job of that. So you just end up compulsively charging it a lot, you know? Um, I also feel like, so I, the other one that I use is the Polar OH1. I can't remember if I'm using the OH1 or the OH1 plus, but I've been using that one 
because Sage and Sandy wanted me to use that to get a better heart rate reading for my runs. So I've been using that. Um, and if it tells me, it'll give me a notification that the battery is low. But if it's telling me that the battery is low during a run, I'm most likely not going to make it to the end of the run. Like the warning needs to come sooner, you know. So, but I don't, I don't know how it is on this one. I guess we'll see. Yeah, Matt Grant, Matt Grant says I'm searching the main channel. I don't see the review, and so I thought maybe I had like bundled it in with another review. But like when I reviewed a couple of different watches, I remember doing like the Apex Two and the Apex Two Pro. I can't remember, is it Apex 2 Pro or Apex Pro 2? I don't remember. But um, one of those watches, I bundled in a Koros Pod review as like a secret bonus, which from an SEO perspective is a terrible idea. But um, I, don't, I couldn't find me doing a review of this heart rate monitor at any point. Maybe I just tested it for a while and I was like, this is boring and just sent it back. I don't, I don't, I really don't remember. But I do have an extra charger. So I'll just send back both chargers when I send this one back. And Adam says, I don't get accurate via optical no matter how tight, even when it leaves the impression on the skin. Oh, okay. Do you do chest or do you just not do heart rate monitor? Or do you get an accurate? Yeah, so I'm guessing you don't get accurate at the wrist either. Interesting. Um, Zachary Hymas says, I switched, Zach James said, I switched to Garmin solely for the daily suggested workouts. Apple and Coros don't seem to have anything like them. You really switched for that? Oh, that's interesting. You know what's interesting that I do? I always want to know what the daily suggested workout is on my Garmin. And I don't, I think I've only done it maybe twice ever. Um, and it will ask me, do you want us to continue giving recommendations? And I always say yes. I always want to know what Garmin thinks I should do just to know how close or off it is from what I'm planning on doing. A lot of times it tells me to take a rest day. <laughs> um. <laughs> Tracy Smith uh, says, after seeing your Garmin 165 screen on Sunday, my husband has found a way to mention how nice it was every day. Not very subtle with the hints. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, on Sunday, I tested the Garmin 165, uh, even though I had only silicone straps, silicone straps, uh, silicone, silicone. Um, and uh, I also compared it against the 265. The main thing being uh, the 165 only has single band GPS, the 265 has dual band. Um, and they, they were very different. Also, because I didn't have a Velcro band on the 165, that run, I was running in the 180 to 190 beats per minute heart rate for parts of the run, whereas the optical armband got it more correctly at like 140s. So it was just way off. TJ Brightis says, I have an old Garmin, so I don't get the daily recommendations, but I want it. I'll probably never take the recommendations, but I want it. <laughs> you don't get it. Even There's no firmware updates. I always felt like that was one of Garmin's like most peculiar strengths is that they will continue to support like everything, you know? Cosmic Pinal Michael says, your garment should catch on and suggest six six minutes at threshold with one minute recoveries. Can you imagine if it started suggesting that? I'd be like, is it suggesting it to everyone? I wonder if they're going to throw AI at that and have an AI give the uh, suggestions. Hmm. David DeFrangio wants to know, does anyone look at the Garmin race predictors and have gotten accurate results? I feel like my Garmin is way too confident in me. <laughs> um, I've had pe I've seen it go both ways. I had some people say um, that like they take it as a challenge, like an insult, you know, like, yo, you think I can only run that for a 5k? Well, let's see, you know, um, or people that are like, uh, I just ran a half marathon faster than that pace. Why can't you update my 5k PR? You know, like 
5k race prediction so i've seen it go both ways i don't think i've ever one, seen anyone say like oh yeah spot on but i guess maybe those are like too boring to be like oh yeah it was right and only that only things that are funny and interesting are the ones that are like very very wrong Tony Macias says, uh, Garmin always tells me you had enough acti activity for the day. Try resting. Their system just under doesn't understand uh, a triathlete schedule. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that. Try like try resting. <laughs> that's that's a new one. Oh man, you have, Tony. Next time you see that, you have to take a picture of that. S send me the picture. That's amazing. Mm. Louis says, maybe we, we aren't understanding Garmin's sarcasm. Oh, okay. Remember that? The, the, we're, the, we're losing something in context because it's text. Uh, Terrence says, my Coro story particular is within seconds for 5K, 10K, and half marathon. But I'm not as good of a marathoner, so that one I'm far off. Interesting. Well, it's letting you know where your potential is, I think, maybe then. If it's giving you one that it's more aggressive than you think you can do. Um... Steven C1984 says, I've had Garmin very closely predict my 5K before, but my VO2 max goes up and down in waves, probably due to my training. Interesting. Mm. Matt Byer says, my Garmin constantly tells me to move, even if I get up over 20,000 steps in a day. I don't, do I have that off? I don't think I've ever had a time to stand up thing. I get it on my on my Apple Watch. So I've, I'm trying to, I've, I've told you guys before I have like I'm on my phone just way too much and so what I've been trying to do is charge my phone not in the bedroom so that way like in the morning I don't reach for my phone and start scrolling like first 30 seconds within waking up and so uh but I also use my phone as my alarm and basically daily manager by a series of alarms. So what I've been doing is I've been making sure the Apple Watch is charged and wearing the Apple Watch to sleep because the haptic alarm on this is so good, it'll wake me up. I've slept through all other running watches, haptic alarms. Um, plus they're harder to set, they're just super annoying. Uh, the Apple one is really easy to set. Um, but I've definitely had mornings where I've, uh, I've just felt the alarm and hit like the stop to have it stop buzzing and then once the alarm screen screen like pops down the screen behind it is it's time to get up i'm like i've been sleeping you like it's not i haven't even been up 10 seconds like chill <laughs> it's trying to trying to get me to get up uh c town fans says how many watches do you have i there's a lot uh i koros is the only one that takes them back um i've asked everyone else if they want them back um but uh only koros will take them back um uh, i don't know i've bought all the apple watches i've bought myself there's a big container of them over there there's probably a good dozen in there that i haven't looked at in several years i'm thinking about um i don't know do i make a display of like sport watch history you know i don't even have a very full collection you know so it's like a, it'd be a weird collection of watches um but there's probably like a dozen in there i've sold a couple of ones that i didn't like you know i think i had a 945 that i sold i didn't like that one you know uh it was just more watch than i needed and then i also got the 265 i think i did i buy the 265 i think no they sent me the two i bought the 255 and then they sent me a 265 i think that's how it went but i was like in the 255 it did everything that i needed it to do so i didn't keep the 945 so there's some that i've parted with some that i've returned things like that All right, we got a PR today. Ernest Capandon says, Hey, I did the RRCA DMV Club Challenge last weekend and PR'd my 10 miler at 113. Amazing. <laughs> it was even on a very hilly course, Ernest says. Congratulations. That's, oh, that's, that's fast. Nice work. 
Uh, Alf Dickinson says, apparently, if you switch your phone to black and white, your brain won't be as excited and you won't have the urge to use it as much. I can't find this on my settings yet to experiment. Is this a thing you could do on an iPhone? I mean, I might need to do that. Like, except for when I'm like loading, uploading my own reel, you know? Because I'm just trying to find, like, I the tricks that I use are to charge it far away from where I am. Like uh, during the day, if I need to charge it, I'll charge it upstairs in the bedroom. And then at night, I'll charge it downstairs in the kitchen. You know? I don't know. <laughs> Matt Cryson says, because uh, the guy in the trench coat with 10 watches on his arm at a race asking, hey, buddy, want to buy a watch? Garmin Guts, $10. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt says, I've got a lot of watches and I have a little setup in my closet with a wall mounted charging area for about 12 to 14 watches. That is a lot of charging. Um, I feel like what would be really funny is if your wife like set an alarm on all of them at one point. <laughs> so just like every day at like 3.04 in the afternoon, they just all start buzzing at the same time. <laughs> Uh, Nate Rodriguez says, do you still use the stride pod? I saw Sunto got a stride app update on the watch. I still use the stride foot pod for, but I only really use it now if I want to get on Zwift on the treadmill. That's pretty much the only time I'll use it. I don't really train by power that much anymore. I've used it for several thousand miles. So I feel like I kind of have an idea of what my efforts translate to. Matt says it would be very weird of, of of his wife if she set an alarm on all of the watches because the wall that they're on is in his office. <laughs> That's what makes it more fun. It wouldn't bother her at all, but it would bother you like crazy. <laughs> uh, Matt Anderson says, "Coach, ever consider?" I think we'll end with this one today. Uh, Matt Anderson wants to know, "Coach, would you ever consider going back to triathlon or just taking up cycling again?" Um, I'm thinking I, I haven't been on the bike in a while, but I'm thinking I have a scheduled cross rest day slash cross training day. So I'll probably hop on the bike then. I mean, I've been on the bike, but not for like cycling, you know, I like ride the bike with my kids and stuff, but, um, so I'll probably hop on the bike this week. Um, I think that I would like to have like swimming lessons, um, or just get a coach if I'm going to do another triathlon. Um, I do like the timing of year, you know, when it happens because summertime is when I would be tra training for a triathlon and I don't like to run a lot or as much in the summer because it's so hot and I don't like running in the heat. But I just, I, I really disliked sw the swim portion of the triathlon. I don't, I don't mind. I enjoy swim training. I'm just so bad at it, but I, I don't mind being in the pool. That part was fine, but after a while, I was just like, when I was in the triathlon, I was just like, I never wanted to give up on a race more um, in that swim portion. It's just, I don't want to go through that again with my current skill set. And I, I don't think me just being in the water more is the answer, you know? So that that's how it would have to be. Adam says, join a master's swim group for instruction. I think there might be a master swim group at the Y. I have to, I'll, maybe I'll look into that. I also just think that it's a good way to stay fit. It's zero impact, you know? I'm getting older, you know, I need, I need some, some of that stuff. So I, I think I think I need it. I think it, maybe that's something that I'll tackle this summer. We'll see. All right, uh, that's gonna be it for today. There will be a review up tomorrow. I think, maybe, probably, uh, a day early because there's an embargo thing happening. And I'll probably want to get my review up sooner or later. I've already filmed it all. I just got to edit it. Um, depends on how much work I can get done, I guess, tonight. Uh, if it'll be up tomorrow. But either way, I'll see you guys at 1 p.m. again, Central Time, same time as today, for another live stream. I don't know what we'll unbox tomorrow. I have to go to the UPS store, see what's there. And I got to track down those Velocity Nitro 3s. I still don't know where those are. So, um, 
yeah so we'll figure out something to look at tomorrow uh it should be fun i don't know what it is yet or why it'll be fun but i'm pretty sure i'm confident it will be so i'll see you guys then in the meantime be safe out there everybody thanks